information we have about drones is what the government tells us, which over and over again proves to be a lie. And the thing about whistleblowers is they're the only ones who can really tell you what's actually going on inside. Hi, this is Newspeaks. I'm Joel, and we're talking to Jesslyn Radek, is a human rights attorney. She represents whistleblowers. She represents Edward Snowden, Tom Drake, John Kuriaku, among others. Uh, Mr. Radek, uh, you had a whistleblower and source protection program called Whisper at the nonprofit organization Expose Facts. How can the Whisper program encourage and support whistleblowers? We have a lot of litigation and courts on test case issues that can break new legal ground. We do strenuous advocacy in the media because you have to win not only in the courtroom, but in the court of public opinion. We do a lot of education and outreach. So we feel that all of that can help protect whistleblowers. Uh, as an attorney working with, um, with so many whistleblowers uh, that recently spoke out on, on the drone subject, how do you see this drone program? I represent nearly a dozen whistleblowers from inside the drone program. And the thing about whistleblowers is they're the only ones who can really tell you what's actually going on inside. And they have consistently, across the board, said that the targeting is not precise at all and that the number of civilian casualties is far underestimated by the U.S. Um, government and human rights organizations and journalistic organizations have always given out much higher numbers of civilian death. According to your book, Traitor, um, Obama, before his first election, he actually called whistleblowers, he addressed them as watchdogs of wrongdoing, end of quotes, and also, and I quote again, partners in performance. What happened to his opinion since, since he was elected? You know, I think President Obama said what he needed to say to get elected. Um, you know, that's one view. Another view is that um, he came into office seen as weak in national security and in the intelligence communities and became very enraptured and, you know, romanticized these once he was, you know, brought in to the secrecy and mystique of these agencies. Um, or he was trying to score points with them and increase his popularity. Right. I don't know. Right. But he has led the worst campaign against whistleblowers since Nixon. And that's not just me saying that as a whistleblower advocate, that's the New York Times saying that. He's been the worst president for press freedom and for whistleblowers and for journalism since Nixon. That's a pretty low bar. Uh, what role does the U.S. Justice and as an attorney currently play in protecting whistleblowers? You're supposed to be able to go to the House and Senate Intelligence Committees. You're supposed to be able to go to Inspectors General. You're supposed to be able to go to um, the Office of Special Counsel. They have these internal mechanisms, but too often they serve as a means of entrapment rather than protecting the whistleblower. Like in the case of Tom Drake, he went through every conceivable internal channel to blow the whistle. And not only did they fail to redress his concerns about government surveillance, they turned around and prosecuted him under the Espionage Act. And then they, the U.S. has a gall to say, Snowden should have gone through internal channels. Well, guess what? Edward Snowden has said very publicly that he watched closely the cases of two of my other clients, Tom Drake and Bill Binney, and saw how they were treated and made his decisions accordingly to go to the media. Do you think this attitude towards whistleblowers will, will change with Hillary Clinton as, as, as a president of the Absolutely US? Absolutely not. She's been a very outspoken critic of Edward Snowden, despite her own mishandling of classified email, mm -hmm. which she did for convenience and not out of any kind of dedication to the public interest. And she has spoken very derisively of Edward Snowden. I don't see any change under, under Trump or Clinton. I just feel like we're in a different political time than we were back when the Nixon administration crashed and burned and he was impeached and there were all these reforms. We're in a very different time politically and we just don't have that revolutionary fervor um, that we had at that point. talking to Rob Weinberg right now. He's a philosopher, founder and editor-in-chief of the Dutch newspaper De Correspondent. So De Correspondent is a crowdfunded like startup newspaper and it's ad-free until now.